Welcome to Time Tunnel Radio. It's Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribed feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headaches, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And now here we go, friends, to Duffy's Tavern with our guest, Shelley Winters, and starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. <laughs> Duffy's Tavern, where do you late meet need, Archie? The man just speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. You sound mad. What's wrong? When you answered the doorbell this morning, you was wearing Mrs. Duffy's bathrobe. Well, what's wrong with that? The milkman kissed you, huh? <laughs> well, what happened? Did you slug the guy? Oh, if he's been kissing Mrs. Duffy, he's had punishment enough. <laughs> you still mad? You think you'll come down here to cool off? Duffy, tonight the tavern ain't no place to cool off. <laughs> Shelly Winters is coming down. Yeah, Winters is the name, Duffy, but it really should be Summers, you know. <laughs> the way she raises a guy's temperature. <laughs> what she look like? Uh, well, you know, I told you about the temperature and... Uh, with the sweat pouring down into your eyes, you can't get a good look. <laughs> she's a very versatile dame, Duffy. You know, she acts on a stage, she's in the movies, and sings in musical comedies, and she's packed to the hilt with talent. And brother, what a hilt. <laughs> also a sensational pair of gams. <laughs> Yes, sir, with them legs, she's made more successful crossings than Pan American Airways. <laughs> well, look, I got work to do, Duffy. I'll call you back. Oh, Yasha! Yasha! Where is that Yasha Pena Slavnik? How do you do? <laughs> Tell me, Yasha, did, uh... Yes? Did any letters or mail come in today? Like an avalanche. Oh. Well, let me see the mail. Hey. Hey, these personal letters are mine. They've been opened. I can read them closed. <laughs> yes, it might have been personal correspondence from a dame, you know. I don't want you to be reading me private mail. Okay, my boss. Or may I call you Cuddles? <laughs> But opening somebody else's letters, how can you do such a thing? How? Yeah. Excuse me. I am holding them over a tea kettle. <laughs> by the by, here is one letter that I'm thinking you will find extremely interesting. What, uh, Billy Do from a female admirer? No, Billy Do overdue from the gas company. <laughs> What does it say? Unless you pay your bill immediately, you will hear from our attorneys. Yeah, throw it away. What's the next letter? From their attorneys. <laughs> oh, yeah, their attorneys, huh? Yeah. Well, they can't scare me into paying their dirty bills. If I don't pay them, what can they do to me? What's the next letter? It's from Sing Sing. <laughs> Oh, well, at last, some social correspondence. Well, it's from my old friend, Nitro McNulty. Oh, what did he say? What did he say? Let me see. Dear Archie, planning to escape. Meet me outside of Main Wall in Automobile and bring my wife. Signed, Nitro. P.S. Bring along another girl for me. Signed, the warden. <laughs> Let's get to the next letter. I wonder who this is from. Uh... It's from, uh, from Peaches Latour, the striptease. 
But you didn't open it. How do you know it's from Peaches Latorta Strip Days? The stamp is peeling off. <laughs> Give me that letter. Let's see. Hey, you're wrong. It ain't a letter. It's a valentine. A valentine. Yeah, let's see. Love to you, my sweetheart mine. Will you be my valentine? I'll be yours if you'll be mine. To you from me, from swine to swine. <laughs> It does not say that, Yashi. I'm afraid you're just jealous. Me jealous? Me jealous? <laughs> I am also having a girl writing me letters. Writing you letters? Yes. Every day she is wanting to see me. She is calling me on the telephone. She is writing me letters. Always wanting to see me. Fortunately, I put a stop to it. How? I let her see me. <laughs> That's one way of killing the goose. Now, uh, let me see. Who could have sent this valentine? Uh, oh, Miss Duffy. Yes, Archie. Miss Duffy, did you send me a valentine? Is there a name on it? No, no signature. It's just uh, unanimous. <laughs> let me see. Hmm. Looks like some dame is out to marry me, but... She's too ashamed to sign her name. Archie, you're being silly. A valentine like that ain't being personal. What do you mean? Look at it. It's printed. If so, a marriage license is just printed, too. <laughs> Fact, though, don't tell me about names. All I ever think about is getting married. Believe me, I've made a study of them. Then how come you keep taking them out? Research. <laughs> But they ain't gonna get all lots. Believe me, I've seen too many horrible results from marriage. Uh, hello, Arch. <laughs> Perfect example. Hiya, Finnegan. Uh, oh, top tip. Top tip? That's tip top. I know, but I'm feeling a little backward today. <laughs> well, that's normal. Uh, let's... <laughs> let's see. Who could have sent that valentine? You got a valentine, Arch? Yeah, it seems there's a dame in love with me. Love? Yeah, love. Love? Look, you know what love is, don't you? Well, I know it has something to do with dames, but from there on, I ain't too clear. <laughs> well, I'll try to explain it. You see, Finnegan, in biology, uh, there's two kinds of genders, you see. Uh, men and women. I assume you know what marriage is. Oh, Sure. That's what you got to have before you get a divorce. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one school of thought. But uh, to put it more succinctly, uh, marriage is, uh, well, it's uh, sort of a friendship that gets loused up. <laughs> now, Franken, the point of this talk is I want you to promise me if you ever see a dame getting me in a clutch, yeah? unclutch me. Break it up. You know, help me use me willpower. I certainly will, Arch. Thanks. You don't think I'm going to let a dame come between us? <laughs> Finning an old man, how does it feel to be an idiot? Well, not too bad, Arch. The trouble is the hours are so long. <laughs> Leave us quit this nonsense talk now. Now, who could have sent this valentine? Maybe I better forget about it. Shelly Winters will be coming down here any minute. And Shelly gonna... Winters. Humph! And what's to humph? Well, not that I want to take anything away from Shelly Winters. Go ahead. Take it away. You need it more than she does. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is she's been a very lucky girl. You should be rolling the same pair of dice. And what do you mean, Lucky? She's got brains and beauty and talent. Yeah, but where would that get her if Edison hadn't invented motion pictures? You call that Lucky? What else? Look, Archie, be honest. Yeah. Suppose a movie producer needs a star for a picture and he has to choose between Shelley Winters and me. Who does he pick? Shelley Winters. There you are. It's a 50-50 chance and she wins. <laughs> Call that luck? 
Believe me, one screen test and I'd have Ray Milan and Clark Gable chasing me, too. What a baseball bat. <laughs> you would have Ray Milan and Clark Gable chasing you. They wouldn't touch you with a ten-foot Louisville slugger. And if you think you're so hot, why don't you try to get into the movies? What? It has men bothering me morning, noon, and night. <laughs> <laughs> men bothering you? That's bad? Frankly, I'm bored with men. Oh, no. This from a dame that sits in the front row at circuses waiting for a human cannonball to overshoot the mark. <laughs> Get aboard with men. Arch, is this dame annoying you? Yeah, very much. Well, beat it, sister. This man has already been spoken for. <laughs> Say, Arch. Yeah? I've been given quite a lot of thought to what you told me. You've been given a lot of thought, huh? Mm. Well, good for you, Finnegan. Only I forget what it is. <laughs> okay, I'll explain it again. Now, and this goes for you, too, Plan Your Slavnik. Uh, you guys got to help me uh, to keep me willpower, you know. Now, if a dame starts making passes at me, what do you do? Well, we break it up. Right. Now, how are you going to do it? Very simple. I merely say, Madame... I believe you dropped your handkerchief. Then when she bends over to pick it up... Yes? I kick her right in the teeth. <laughs> well, it ain't exactly Emily Posty, but at least it'll be effective. Now, let me see this valentine. Hey, hey this I didn't notice. What's under the heart? What's under the heart? Yeah. The liver. <laughs> No, no, I mean, what's under the heart on this valentine? It's a poem. Let's see here. Roses are red, licorice is black. Kiss me, sweetheart, and I'll kiss you back. Hey, wait a minute. This proves it. I know who's after me. Who? Shelly Winters. Shelly Winters, are you kidding? Look, Miss Duffy, this is poetry, ain't it? Yeah. Did you ever have a poet named Byron? Yeah. Keats? Mm-hmm. Did it ever occur to you that there is also a poet named Shelley? <laughs> and as further proof, just take a look at this word. What word? Sweetheart. Please, this is so sudden. <laughs> no. Please. Oh, Miss Slavnik, I'm talking about the word sweetheart in the poem. And Miss Duffy... In the word, sweetheart, what's the first two letters? S-W. I suppose it's a coincidence that Shelley Winter's initial is also S-W? <laughs> Finnegan, you better keep your eye on me tonight and watch that willpower. I'm afraid the dame has interior motives. <laughs> Don't worry, Arch. We'll protect you. I think I'll need it. You know, she's, she's at that dangerous Hollywood age. <laughs> Between husbands. <laughs> so don't forget your promise, fellas. The first time you see a gleam in your eye, I want you to quick hop in and frustrate her. Well, you better put your frustrators on quick, because there she is coming in the door right now. Oh, brother, look at those. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Arch, don't forget. Willpower. Okay, Finnegan, I'll play it safe. I'll only look her in the face. <laughs> Yes, sir, I'll, I'll bridle me passions. I'll stifle myself. I'll dam up me emotions. Hello, Archie. Run for the hills, boys. The dam has burst. <laughs> oh, Shelly Winter. Well, Archie, th this is the first time I've ever... Just a second, Miss Winters. I happen to know how you feel, but I'm sorry. The answer is definitely no. Well, that's a cool greeting. Coolness is as coolness does. Ah, boy, Arch. Archie, Archie, aren't you even going to shake hands? Well, I'll shake hands, okay, but uh, just a quick one. <laughs> All right, then I'll take off my glove. What's that? I'll take off my glove. Oh, no, you don't, sister. <laughs> Thank you, Finnegan. Say, what's going on here? Look, Miss Winters, I want you to know that you mean nothing to me. What? You heard me. Them 
soft blue eyes. They, they mean nothing. That beautiful blonde hair and them lips. And <laughs> gorgeous figure and them terrific legs. They do nothing to me, see? Say, hey, boss, boss, what? here. What? Your eyes, they just popped out of their sockets. <laughs> Say, you're cute. Don't say that. <laughs> but you are. I know, but don't say that. All right, I won't say it. You won't say what? <laughs> you're cute. Please say it again. <laughs> Look, cut it out, Shelly. I can see right through you. What? <laughs> I mean, this clumsy attempt to make me jealous. You know, you, you're just a moth to a flame. Just another one of the bats in me belfry. Bats in the belfry is right. Uh, now, please, uh, leave us forget the past and uh, get the conversation back to the drawing room. Now, tell me, uh, what, are they, uh, what are they talking about in good old... <laughs> You know, you're quite a dish. Archie, my face is up here. Oh, yes. <laughs> By the way, that, uh, that dress you're wearing. Oh, it's really nothing. You're so right. <laughs> but, uh, must say for you, though, Miss Winters, that with a figure like yours, you don't need clothes. <laughs> Uh, me, uh, tell me, uh, what are people talking about in, uh, good old Hollywood these days? Oh, the same thing. Each other. <laughs> Hello. I wonder if they still remember me out there. You know, I once starred in a picture for Paramount. Oh, yes, they're still talking about you. Yeah, huh? What are they saying? I don't know. I'm a lady. I always leave the room. <laughs> Well, tell me, uh, what pictures you've been making lately? Well, uh, I just finished a Technicolor picture for Universal. Uh, well, what's it called? Frenchie. It's called Frenchie, huh? Mm -hmm. Watch, don't forget, your willpower. <laughs> don't worry, I'm just toying with the dame. <laughs> uh, by the way, Archie, uh, do you mind if I sit down? No, I uh, sit down on that bar stool there. Uh, uh Speaking of the movies... Uh, Archie, this bar stool is rather high. Uh, we keep it that way so the customers won't feel small if they don't buy a second drink. <laughs> uh, speaking of movies... It's uh, so nice to sit down. All oh, these high heels are killing me. <laughs> They're killing me, too. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of movies... Archie, uh, do you think these black stockings go well with these shoes? Black stockings? <laughs> yeah, very well. Uh... Mooking of speakies. Uh, I mean, uh, making of uh, spookies. Uh, Archie, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? Uh, uh, nothing. Nothing. Nothing that a cold shower couldn't cure. <laughs> Quiet, Tanya Slavnik. Uh, 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 Miss Winters, uh, speaking of Hollywood... Uh, by the way, you've got a run in your stocking. Oh, uh, I'll have to fix it. Uh, can I help you? Uh, I mean, uh, may I may I get you a needle and thread, Miss Winters? Well, well, that would be very sweet of you, Archie. Not at all. In fact, I think you're a very sweet boy. Really? And handsome, too. Honest? <laughs> of course. Cross your legs and hope to die? your legs and hope to die. It's uh, the name of a new book. <laughs> uh, speaking of books, uh, have you read any good stockings lately? <laughs> I mean, books? Well, yes, I have. Uh, that's nice. Uh, anything new? Yes. What? The new Kinsey report. <laughs> that did it. Shelly, I'm a dead duck. 
May I have the pleasure of your next marriage? <laughs> Archie, is, is this a, a, a sincere proposal? You think these goose pimples is false? <laughs> Of course it's a proposal, so what do you say? Well, I'll, I'll have to think it over. Well, why? You, you, you just told me I was sweet. Yes. And, and handsome. Um, I'm sorry, Archie, but the man I marry must have a lot of money. Well, it was nice while it lasted. <laughs> No matter what you now take for headache relief, we urge you to try Anison for the incredibly fast relief these tablets bring the next time you're suffering from a headache. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy to take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way, discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So, the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A N A C I N. Anison at any drug counter in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Look, Shelly, you got to marry me. I'm sorry, Archie, but I can't break a promise. A promise? Yes, I promised myself that the next time I got married, it would be for money. Got to have money, huh? Absolutely. Well, I ain't exactly saying that I'm filthy rich, but I ain't exactly saying that I'm filthy poor, neither. No, it's just filthy. <laughs> Thank you. You see, Shelley, if I wasn't rich, you'd think this peasant would insult me. <laughs> but if you have so much money, why do you work in a place like this? Look, Shelley, this tavern is just a hobby with me. You think if I worked here, I could afford to own a Rolls Royce with a mink tail and a radiator cap? <laughs> Which reminds me, yeah, sure. Yeah, I should take the Rolls Royce down to one of my oil wells and fill it up with diesels. I'm beginning to be impressed. You ain't heard nothing yet. I... Oh, excuse me. Oh, probably me wealthy stockbroker. <clears throat> hello? Oh, hello, Whitcomb. Don't forget tonight. Uh, tell me, Whitcomb, uh, how are all me stocks and bonds on Wall Street? Uh-huh. And uh, what about Consolidated Amalgamated Inc.? <laughs> huh? They've incorporated? God, they've done it again. Buy a million more shares. Uh, and this time, not just them little common ones. <laughs> Get me the big ones, the preferred. Uh, very good, Whitcomb. And by the way, what happened to Maternity Ward? <laughs> And what about consolidated can? <laughs> Bottom drop down, huh? <laughs> well, in that case, I'll tell you what you do. Uh, buy me 10,000 shares of social securities. <laughs> Thanks, Whitcomb. Well, things seem to be popping in Wall Street. Yes, it sounds like a real bull market. Well... <laughs> Now that I've proved how rich I am, can you think of any reason for us not getting married? No, but I will. Just give me a second. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, how about your background? Huh? Your family. Oh, them. Well, uh, Grand Peter was also a millionaire, you know. In fact, I shouldn't really talk about our family fortune without giving him credit. You know, he was the original flounder. <laughs> Start as a poor boy, too. He Mayflowered it over here with Grandmama. And they was lucky enough to pick up Pennsylvania at the right price. <laughs> so I grew up on the estate and went to college. Oh, what, what college did you go to? Well, Dad wanted me to go to Harvard and Mother wanted me to go to Yale. What happened? They compromised. 
That's when Dad built Princeton. <laughs> so you see, Shelley, I have both money and background. So when do you say we take me two yachts and start on a little honeymoon? Two yachts? Yeah, mark his and hers. <laughs> Now, leave us quit wasting time. Uh, Yash, if Duffy calls, tell him me and Shelly is on our way down to Little Church around the corner, huh? Little Church around the... Oh, no, you don't, sister. Then again, please, stay away from this. But, Arch, what about your willpower? I, I know, but this time I'm really in love. In love, he says. This is what he's telling all his wives. Oh, <laughs> no. Panya, Slavnik, please, stay away from this. And Miss Winters, did he tell you he has 12 wives and 48 children? Forty-eight children. One for every state in the union. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. And where are the wives? Standing by for Alaska and Hawaii. <laughs> Shelly, please. Shelly, please don't listen to them. They're nuts. Can't you tell just by looking at them that they're nuts? I don't know. Around here, there's no basis for comparison. <laughs> Look, everybody, will you shut up and forget that willpower stuff? I'm, I'm proud to say that I have conquered me willpower. This dame I want to marry. You want to marry? Yeah. If I spent all that dough. What dough? The dough I spent on that valentine. Oh, no. <laughs> Here's a word from RCA Victor. It's a great life this week for television enthusiasts. Yes, the current issue of Life magazine, dated February 12th, contains a really thrilling double-page advertisement showing RCA Victor's complete new 1951 series of million-proof television, America's favorite television, owned most, proved most, and now more wonderful than ever. Your whole family will pour over and purr over the detailed pictures and descriptions of 14 new RCA Victor models, each more glamorous than the last. Table toppers, consoles, and television radio phonograph console combinations. Cabinets ranging from an exquisite 18th century low boy to a stunning modern swiveler. 14, 17, and 19-inch screens with such beautiful pictures... Well, you'll simply have to see them to believe them. So run, don't walk, to the nearest RCA Victor dealers and meet all the glamorous new million-proof models in real life. Here's hoping you can take home your favorite set soon and start having the time of your life enjoying the life of your time with matchless RCA Victor television. Listen again next week, friends, to Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribed feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. The best cigarette for you to smoke. By the makers of Addison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Listen tomorrow evening for The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, the Saturday night feature of the All-Star Festival. Music